So we're here today at Coconuts TV with Tom Youngs, ex Cambridge United player, man of many goals, which we'll go on to discuss. Let's start at the beginning, Tom, and talk about your career. Obviously, as a child, you've been playing for a couple of years and you were spotted by Cambridge United Scout and persuaded to join the club's academy. Where was you playing your football? Was you playing local? Yeah, I played I play for Mildenhall, and um, luckily enough, our, uh, our manager, he was always trying to get people you know, picked up, so we went to a trial at Coldham's Common and um, somebody liked what they saw, thankfully. Yeah, and, yeah thankfully. And, yeah, and uh, I got, you know, I was on the books right through, really, from that age. And we talked about, obviously, you playing, having a strange birthday in terms of football player terms in August, mm -hmm. um, off camera just now. Yeah. Obviously, that helped you in terms of your career, I suppose, because you got to play up a year, wasn't it? Yeah, well, because that meant that when it came to YTS, I, I was all mo already moving on to my A-levels and everyone else who I played with was still, you know, in their GCSE year. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like I had to make a decision and I, I didn't, you know, I didn't want to give up my A-levels at the time. So I just stayed on. I still played for the youth team with all those players. And then when it came to the end of their season when they would have been either going on to YTS or not, you know, thankfully by that time, Roy had seen me play in the youth team a few times and, and he put you into the first offered me a, a, a two year pro deal so and how did it feel being a local lad getting a pro deal at the club oh, yeah it was yeah it was brilliant I mean that's the only reason that you you've been I've been here for what seven years at that time from from such a young age that's all that that's all and that can you remember your debut yeah in the first team? yeah definitely can um, you remember can you remember who we played yeah Colchester at home Came on for about two minutes. Uh, we won four one. I think Shaggy got a couple, and um, yeah, I, j I just came on towards the end. And then Chenna's pulled one back to me, and it got sort of blocked c quite close to the line. I won't quite say it was cleared off the line, but yeah. it was yeah, it was close. <laughs> so a good, a good debut then. Yeah, it was all right. It was such a whirlwind because the day before I'd made my reserves debut because I was still obviously. I was my birthday was two days before I turned 18. Mm -hmm. uh, I made my reserves debut at Colchester the day before. Oh, nice. Scored the winner and then got on the bench the next day. For the first and then come on and nearly scored again. Came on and, yeah, didn't quite score, but it was still good. Not popular with the Colchester fans then? No, although Layer Road, I had a nightmare pretty much. Other than that reserve game, which helped get me into the first team, <laughs> I had a nightmare at Layer Road Shocker. every time that I played there. Yeah. So obviously you went on to score 48 goals in 180 appearances here at the Abbey. That's true. So let's just talk us through some of those goals. I know, I know personally from a few of the other lads that used to be a bit of a stat whiz kid yeah. and a bit of a brainy footballer. Obviously you've got a good memory, as we've yeah. just seen. Talk me through some of those goals. What I mean, what was your favourite goal you scored for the Abbey? That's been asked by one of the fans, by the way, on the Coconut social media. Um, well, I mean, my favourite goal for United has to be the, the one at Scunthorpe that stuck in the stanchion. It was a bit of a belter, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a good strike and obviously sticking in the stanchion. Not that I knew at the time. <laughs> so, you know, I should have made more of it, I suppose. But... Um, I just, ran a rocket. I just ran off and celebrated and I didn't even notice that it And as you've just informed me and Tom McCrane, that is on YouTube, people, to watch if they want to I find believe it. it. I believe it still is, <laughs> yes, just about. Um, and here at the Abbey, my, my, my first goal at the Abbey, well, my first league goal at the Abbey was um, last minute equaliser against Wigan. Um, and that kind of catapulted me into the first team reckoning, mm. really. Um, uh, Roy Carroll was in goal for them. Shaggy had a shot. Shaggy missed for once. 20 yards, got deflected and Roy Cavill just dropped it and I managed to sort of pounce on the rebound and that, that kind of got me started really. Kind of started you going? Yeah. yeah nice. Definitely. And who would you say probably is the hardest player you've had to play against? I mean, I've, I've unearthed a picture of a young John Terry with a diving header with you yeah. basically looking about you about to kick him in the head. Well, obviously, <laughs> you know, at the time... I obviously didn't know who John yeah, Terry exactly. was, but he clearly was playing. You know, I've played against loads of people in the youth team. I mean, my youth team debut, I got marked by Rio Ferdinand, who again, I didn't really know who he was yeah. at the time. But, you know, he wasn't yeah. bad. And Lampard scored both goals 
<laughs> yeah, what well, I mean, that, that must have been hard for you being a little fella against I me. Was yeah? t- I mean, I was even smaller than I mean, I was six, 15, 16, I was tiny, <laughs> and um, he was a giant. So, did, did uh, Rio keep you in his pocket, do you think? Pro- probably, although we, we did okay. Trev scored, and then Lampard scored a sort of last minute winner for them. But um, yeah, I did, did okay, but I don't think I sort of <laughs> tested him too much. And throughout your time playing at the Abbey, who would be the best player you've played alongside? Obviously, you've been in some great strike partnerships along Big Dave, Trev that we just named, and a few others, Shaggy, to name a yeah. few. Who would be the best player you've played alongside here at the Abbey and why? It's diff- I mean, I'd probably say Kits. Yeah. Because just purely because of how two, two-footed he was. He had such, a, such, such talent. And um, he came from obviously nowhere. I mean, Becky, Shelf stacking, wasn't he? At Becky Becky scouting Becky found team him. found him from somewhere at Alsey, and um, I just was blown away by it. like the first time I saw and trained with him. I was just blown away by how two footed he was, and you know he had great awareness. And um, yeah, I mean he was he was really good and obviously he went and then played in the Premier League what's it like as another striker playing alongside someone like Dave Kitson someone like you say that's quick he's agile he's two footed on the ball um, I mean obviously that helped you in, your, in terms of your career because obviously let's, let's be honest you had scored Big Dave that season didn't you as well 11 just, goals just about <laughs> yeah um, no I, I used to enjoy playing with Kits I mean it's kind of I probably played some sometimes up front with him and then sometimes, sometimes wide on the wing. Um, so I mean, I enjoyed playing with him wherever I played with because obviously if I was playing up front with him, I could just sort of be closer to him and, you know, get on flick-ons and link up with him more. But then if I was playing wide, I could he's always someone that you could lend the ball to and then move off because you know... He'll, you know he's going to lay it back off to you more or less. Uh, it's probably a bit like when I broke into the team originally, played Trev obviously was playing up front and um, you just could bank on him you know being strong against defenders getting hold of the ball and so you could sort of time runs off him. it's quite interesting how you mentioned as well Dave Trev both big physical present strikers against you yourself young little fella mm-hmm. obviously it brings different attributes to the game doesn't it so obviously yeah. then partnerships work quite well I would I would probably add another one here because Zemo he wasn't here for very long obviously yeah um, which was a shame because like that half a season I had with Zima, I, I was mainly playing on the left or the right, and he was just so good at getting hold of the ball mm. and bringing Holding me it into up, play. So yeah, exactly. I mean, he wasn't a prolific goal scorer. I don't think he ever would be, but he was um, he was fantastic target man for us to, to base our play around. And uh, it was a shame that obviously, you know, he left so soon, and then he obviously had really bad injuries in his yeah, career that yeah. really affected him which was a shame and wh- where would you prefer to play obviously you're talking about you've played striker you play wide I mean I remember as a kid seeing you playing on wide I used to think oh he's, he's good on the wing but mine been like him but where would you prefer to play would you prefer to play in the hole say behind a big physical striker or would you like to play out in the wing yeah probably uh, uh, I suppose they call it a number 10 these yeah. days don't they <laughs> so Probably, I, I've, uh, I mean, when I first broke in, I liked to play in behind two because we had, you know, normally played with two strikers mm. and I played in behind them. Or later on, I'd just play as a sort of deeper centre forward next to one, whether it's Kits or whoever. But um, that was probably my best position. I probably should have been more comfortable playing wide because I didn't. The trouble is, I think, when I was playing, Everyone would think about a wide man just being really, really quick and just going down the line and getting crosses in. But that, that was sort of never my game. So I maybe always thought that's what people want. And so I didn't really fully embrace playing there, mm-hmm. I don't think, as, as much as I probably should have done. Because I could have played there and still then gone and affected the game just in a, in a slightly different way. Almost like an inside forward sort of position. Yeah, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Cutting in with a bit of pace, something that the bigger boys obviously didn't have. Yeah, well, I obviously <laughs> didn't, I didn't have that much pace either, thankfully. <laughs> but um, uh, there you go. You know, I I, I, I still I enjoy playing no matter where, to be honest. Obviously, you was part of the ninety ninety eight kind of promotion team here under Roy. Yeah. What was that like? Talk me through that season and some of the stories from that season that you can remember. 
Um, obviously, it, it was it was brilliant. I mean, I was you were still relatively young, wasn't you? Yeah, well? I was sort of nineteen and and just in and out of you know, on the bench a lot. Um, but but it was great. It was great training with all those players because we had a really young squad. I mean, mm. I think I think Ice was the old uh, Iron Van Houston. Yeah. He was probably the oldest player at like twenty six, mm -hmm. and everyone else was kind of twenty five or more younger. And, below. and we enjoyed, you know, going out together and socialising. It was it was a pleasure coming. There's some big leaders in the dressing room in that time. Obviously, Wani, as we know. Yeah. yeah. What, what was it like? Was in the dressing room. I mean, what was the team spirit like? Do you think the team spirit is key to a promotion season? It's, it, it certainly helped us that season. But like I said, we were all sort of like-minded, young, hungry, wanted wanted to achieve things, and um, and it, you know it worked. It worked really well, and we had a great dressing room, definitely. Um, yeah, and obviously we had the older heads. We had like Priestley and Shaggy in there as well, um, but then. Then we had uh, sort of our mainstays like you know Wani mm. and um, Ice and Goal, mm. and, and obviously we've talked to Roy before um, at Coconuts TV. What was Roy like to play under? How, how was he sort of management of the team? How did you enjoy that uh, as a youngster as well? Yeah, I mean he he spoiled me really because it was just like as someone who signed me at sort of seventeen, just turning eighteen, you you couldn't really w want for a better manager, and. Um, you know, he was, he just let us, you know, he let us express ourselves, let us go and play, and he obviously could pick a player so he could put a team together. And um, yeah, I mean, he was, he was great, and we were all so sad, obviously, when, yeah, when he left, left. Um, having had, you know, some, some decent success on him, really. Uh, I, think, I think he went quite quick as well, didn't he, to be honest, I think. Yeah, um, but, but like, you know, I think, as I've said it before, at the time, even I think it was probably in his, ev the fact that we so wanted to do well mm. and keep him in his job was maybe sort of the being a bit of a burden it. and yeah. we, we, we were struggling. I remember sort of his last few weeks, I, I, I missed his last three games because I got injured, but you know, th that time was just awful, you know, mm. going in and you just, you know, the writing's on the wall. But you really want to do well. To do well for the gaffer sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I think it's one of those things that maybe if he had stayed in place, we, we might have gone down. And so, you know, that wouldn't have been good no, for exactly. anybody. And in 2000, October, you obviously signed a new three-year contract and the team's form slumped. You're struggling with injury and illness. John Beck replaced Roy McFarland. He signed strikers Dave Kitson and Amarisa. But you still finished the season as United's top scorer with 14 goals. Yeah, it was weird because obviously... Becky came in towards the end of that season after Roy, the, the, the previous season under Roy, and um, obviously we stayed up, which was great. But um, you know, for me, I, I was a bit worried about you know my potential future uh, under under John. So um, you went out of the points proven, obviously done well in it. Well, I d yeah, but I, I probably didn't score that many goals while he he, he only st stuck around till about October, mm, maybe mm, November. Mm. So I think I had a couple at that point, but then I um, I scored I scored quite a few with you know under Shaggy yeah, in yeah. the second half of the season and managed to it was <laughs> Kits was going. We came in off the last game of the season at Northampton and going into it he was on ten I was on nine and. Um, I scored two on the day, obviously. So he came <laughs> into the change room. And I think he was a bit gutted. A bit gutted that he didn't yeah. scare me. <laughs> nice. Tom, do you want to ask a question? Tom, I think I've asked you this before, but uh, you were 19 years old. How do you, how does a 19, do you ever look back and say, how did I manage to go up at 18, 19, playing a man's game against guys who've been in this division for years? Yeah, it, it was, it was difficult. I mean, you just have to use your strengths, um, I think, when you're that age. And, you know, I was I was probably a little bit quicker than some of the centre-halves. But equally, I like to sort of get into pockets and, you know, make them go where they didn't want to go, really, centre-halves. And, um, you know, that, that kind of helped with me. And obviously, I managed to 
sort of impressed Roy and Parisi and, and they saw enough in me to then want to give me opportunities. But I still, even though I came into the side or sort of in and out, I, it took me a couple of years to really sort of break in sort of more regularly. So to those non-footballers among us, you're not the biggest. <laughs> We've said that to you, I've said that to mm -hmm. you before, you've said it yourself today. Yeah. How do you deal with a big centre-half, as you say, if you're quicker than it? Yeah, well, you just have to move him about. So, you know, I could, even though I wasn't ever a powerful runner, I wasn't particularly quick, I could still be, you know, still get on your toes, get down the channels and, 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 and turn them around. But mainly, I used to think I'll, I'll just go, I, I wanted to go towards the ball and link up play a lot of the time. Mm. So, and the centre half didn't like coming out of their comfort zone and being too you know too high forward. up the pitch so they would probably you know give me a bit more room than they should do if, <laughs> I, if I did so that. Is that what okay. Roy McFarlane meant when he described you as the sort of player he loved to watch on the field? Uh, p I, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he did ask him but I, I, I got on really well with Roy and I think they sort of like he liked the way I played so that, that always helps definitely with a manager. Going back on to further on into the career, obviously at Cambridge United, 2001-2002 season, we saw another change in management. We saw Shaggy and Dale Brooks appointed. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you played in a 4-3-3 sort of formation that was favoured alongside Big Dave, as we've already mentioned, and another big striker in Armand Onay. <laughs> <laughs> how, how did you find that? Obviously, results weren't great that season. Um, you're struggling to pick up results but obviously there was the kind of consolation of a day out at the Millennium Stadium in the RDV final I mean talk us through that season from the highs and the lows also how did it feel to play at the Millennium Stadium yeah well apart from obviously the final result there <laughs> yeah well I, Becky took us away for pre-season to some barracks in Aldershot what were Becky's pre-seasons like were they as gruelling as everybody thinks they are is it just a myth or well, as a former player under Becky, is it true? Were they gruelling? I only had one, and uh, down at Aldershot, I got injured quite quickly. Was that because so, of the pre-season training? <laughs> well, who knows, but I picked up a sort of tear in my... They thought it was a hernia to start with, mm -hmm. but it, it was somewhere in my sort of lower stomach. And so I was out for about pretty much the whole of pre-season, I think. I made my first game that season in the second or third game. So... So I didn't, I didn't really experience the full on. Yeah, I mean, as fans, you hear these horror stories of his pre-season regimes. Yeah, it was hard work, but like I say, I missed quite a lot of it. But I think, you know, it wasn't, you know, beyond the pale, really. I don't yeah. think. Um, and then, you know, I was, yeah, we we started the season poorly, but you know, we were punching above our eight, really, in mm. terms of like wage bill and everything, you know, and. We'd done re amazingly to stay up for the, you know, the previous two seasons, really. Um, so, you know, and I think you know we had a bit of a, you know, we we lost a few players yep. um, from Roy's team, and then so it was a bit, bit trickier starting mm. under Becky. And obviously, the way he likes to play, I think it suits. Certain types of players. So, yeah, well, players that he would want to bring in, mm. and I don't think he could all bring in basically. What he wanted. You know, carte blanche changes to get everything that he wanted. So I think we we kind of ended up with a little bit like a manager that didn't have the tools at his disposal mm. to play the way he wanted to. And for some of us players, it probably didn't particularly work that well either because it wasn't how we wanted to play or particularly suited us. So it kind of, I don't know, it kind of didn't work on either level really. But then, like I say, it, it sort of fizzled out about November, by which time we were comfortably bottom of the table. <laughs> and um, then you know, Shaggy took over, you know, with no real prospect of us staying up I suppose but the Millennium Stadium was hopefully a day out for the fans in a pretty miserable season in general mm. yeah it was a good day out it was, well I enjoyed it apart from the result it was <laughs> yeah I, it's a shame I mean I do get a bit annoyed about that game because for an hour we were in it if not 
if not the better side, particularly for a lot of the first half. But then, having said that, um, Blackpool were a good side, mm. much better side than us really. They battered us in the league about three weeks, four weeks beforehand. So, um, you know, we probably should have expected to get beat. But when we got to like half time and just after half time, at one all, and if anything in the ascendancy, anybody's go. I thought, yeah, I was really disappointed with you know how we rolled over really second half, but that's the way it goes. Tell us a little bit about the Millennium Stadium then. It's yeah, it's great. Um, it's a really really good stadium. Um, I because I actually went to the playoff final um, Norwich that season, the end of that season. Um, with my brother and the roof was on and it was the, the, the atmosphere was absolutely amazing now the atmosphere was still good on ours but obviously the, the roof wasn't yeah. on and there's only 20,000 there because this mm. game is Blackpool um, so you know not quite the same but still I mean it's it's a great arena the facilities are are fantastic so you know really really enjoyed it and like I say for up until about 60 minutes like walking out into the pitch as a player and you've got you can see your fans there and all your fans are backing you what does that feel like as a player yeah it was it was brilliant you know the, the whole day like I say up until about 60 minutes was, was <laughs> really good um, and you know, what, what about here what, change, changing stadiums then and perspectives what about here at the Abbey I mean we a lot of the ex players we speak to say how much they used to love stepping out here you're in that little tunnel you walk out onto the Abbey pitch yeah. you can hear the fans roaring getting behind you what's it like as a player playing at the Abbey when the fans are right behind you like in a big game let's say yeah no it's brilliant I mean the, the atmosphere here is so good it's it's really it can be really loud I mean obviously I remember the Sheffield Wednesday League yeah, Cup is games that it? and um, you know the noise that night and I, mean, I think they you know Danny Wilson and their players would have you know sort of mentioned it at the time it was such a, such a night really like the atmosphere there yeah i remember it was a bit like a fortress wasn't it that night obviously the sheffield wednesday players didn't fancy it yeah but no it was yeah it was all like the most thing i remember from that night is when jamie campbell scored the own goal <laughs> uh, and roy just going <laughs> mad because they hadn't really been in it that much no and then we gave them a goal so but thankfully trev you know got one back Trev managed to do his business. Yeah. Obviously, that same going back to that season, 2001, 2002. Again, you finished top goal scorer. So that's what two seasons, three seasons running now, top goal scorer. Yeah. What's What's the secret? How, how do you score good goals? How, how, how do you outscore people? Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm I was playing up the right end of the pitch. That definitely helps. Um, I don't know. Just. I'd always been a goal scorer. Like a natural really. goal scorer, yeah. Kind of a guest goal scorer from a, from a young age. So, you know, all of that movement that you've been practising since you were... Becomes like a second nature. Nine years old. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, you just kind of have to sort of get to appreciate where you need to run, mm. where you need mm. to be to get on the end of okay. things. Because um, I was never going to score many from outside the box. <laughs> so I had to... Um, I had to you know get on the end of things really and that was that was my game obviously going into the 2002 2003 season there was a lot of optimism especially off the pitch yeah obviously you're a big fan of the cheeky girls because that helped you win university challenge that's true do you want to tell me about that how you took on oxford's andy scott in radio fires live version of that yeah it was funny because um scotty i obviously played with scotty yep. later at orient and, and we were talking about it um I don't know, the BBC just phoned me up saying they wanted to do this thing because it's Cambridge versus Oxford um, in, the, in, the, in the, whenever it was. And um, they said they wanted to do this thing and it was all a stitch up for um, Ian Payne, the presenter. Yeah. Yeah. So they fed us a couple of questions, you know, really ridiculous questions that no one would think that we would know. And um, that just sort of put him off guard. And then it was all about the cheeky girls which you know and i made sure i won it <laughs> even though Good i man. didn't want to be proud <laughs> yeah. about knowing the cheeky girl's question i still wanted to you win. still won it yeah so anyway john taylor was more interested in your on-pitch achievements he's quoted here saying i don't think you'll find a forward in the lower divisions who understands the game as much as tom young's 
The runs he makes and the positions he takes up, as well as the way he brings the other players into the game, are all excellent. I think that sums you up well, doesn't it, as a player? I hope so, yeah. That's kind of what I tried to do, yeah. Obviously, during that time, that period, the club were kind of having a bit of, as we said before, they kept struggling to stay afloat, kept struggling to stay up. He was promptly sold to Northampton for £50,000, yeah. and negotiations here had stalled at the Abbey. Obviously, you've stayed here as a child, you come through the ranks as a child, into the first team, developed into the first team. It's all, it's all you know, Cambridge United. Mm -hmm. You live local. Yeah. How does it feel going up the road to Northampton, one of Cambridge's rivals, for instance? Um, well, I don't know. Things just conspired at the time. I'm, we had a, I thought we had a decent shot that season. We struggled a bit towards the end with a few injuries. We had a very young squad. And I thought if, if we're not going to get back up that season, I, I thought it, you know, it was only going to be a downwards trajectory, mm. which mm. is obviously the way it proved yep. in the two seasons afterwards. Um, I didn't think Kits would be around for too long. Um, I didn't think Omar was going to be around for mm. too much mm. longer. Um, so, yeah, I thought possibly if the squad is starting to dismantle, might be um, time to move on. I think, yeah, and obviously people were coming in for me, so, and, and Northampton were the ones that had enough money to, to do it at the time and, uh, you know, could pay the fee. And, I, you know, when I spoke to them, they had sort of quite, quite a good vision of the future. Unfortunately, it's not really panned out for them, really. Um, as a club, they had, you know, grander plans than, mm. than what has happened mm. in the sort of 15 years since. But, um, it, you know, I thought it was, it was the right, right place for me to go at the time. And as we've discussed with ex-players before, obviously, footballers don't get a long period in terms of job career, do they? No. So at the end of the day, you've got to think about number one as well at the end of the day, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, of course, yeah, I'm not going to lie and say the money had nothing to do with it. <laughs> um, obviously, I doubled my money going there, so it was... It's just a shame that United that. and Gary Harwood, for instance, stalled on a contract offer for here for you, isn't it? Well, they, they came up with something. I just, I, I got annoyed about on a matter of principle when, when we had our negotiations, and then I just felt that if they were going to... I thought, I thought they weren't playing... Uh, playing you know, ball, so to speak. Exactly. So I thought, well, you know, there's there's other opportunities. Definitely. And obviously, you didn't have to travel. Well, you obviously travelled up to Northampton, but you didn't yeah. have to relocate, which is always handy. Um, obviously, you came back to the Abbey with the Cobblers. Mm -hmm. How did that feel coming back here then as a former player, coming and playing back here at the Abbey? Well, I mean, what was the difference? How did it feel playing on the pitch? Um, well, it was kind of weird because obviously I'd been injured for about six, seven months at Northampton. So I think this was my f second game back. Um, so it was kind of a bit of a lot to take in. I mean, when we arrived at the ground, and everyone was coming out, you know, from under the ground, yeah, were yeah. saying hello and that. All my teammates were sort of laughing about yeah, yeah. this Hollywood star kind of <laughs> home kind of thing. Yeah. But um, yeah, it was, it was kind of, yeah, it was kind of wrapped up in all of it was me trying to establish myself at a new club with, this was like my second game back in a long, long time. Mm. Cambridge were obviously really struggling to avoid relegation to the, what was the conference now. And um, yeah, I, I, I don't think I particularly handled the day that well, like all the emotions. And then obviously it went clean through after about half an hour. And, and totally Gleese, Gleese got a good one on you? Well, he did, but I mean, <laughs> I just, I, I messed my touch up. I think I got it stuck under my feet and allowed him to get back. Bit unusual from someone we've known scoring a lot of goals previously. Was that maybe done on purpose? <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to say it was, but uh, no, I had, uh, well, I was uh, coming Just up a bad to day at the office. But it was a bad day and I was coming up to Marshy and yeah, it was just yeah, it was a bit <laughs> strange. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so then after Northampton, you went on to have a spell at Leighton Orient. How yeah. was that for you? How did that work out? Well, it was literally, I was coming towards the end of my time at um, Northampton. Um, Colin, obviously, Coldwood, yeah. was obviously in charge. And I, I didn't think I was going to get a new deal. So he was really good friends with Martin Ling at Orient. 
So he said about, you know, would, would I like to go there just to the end of the season? They, they basically took over my contract till mm -hmm. the end of the season, um, which I did. Um, and, you know, I scored on my debut, which was great, but it wasn't a vintage time for me at, at there because I didn't really fit into to what um, Lingy, was wanting. Lingy wanted. I mean, a bit like earlier, I was mm. saying about wingers who yeah. want to um, just Drive. go with pace down the touchline and cross balls. And I said to him at the time, I said, well, really, you need Tudes. And obviously he signed Tudes the next summer yeah. and they won the league, or yeah. they mm, certainly got promoted anyway. Mm. So, you know, that was that was kind of like the kind of winger that he really wanted. So that, that we talk we talked there about well you talked there about two managers that are associated with Kenge United. Yeah. Obviously Collins the kind like to be under at Northampton. Absolutely brilliant. I mean I I really, really got on with Colin. I mean I've said it I've obviously said it in my book. I got on really well with him. Just unfortunately circumstances at the time. I was obviously injured mm. when he took over mm. at Northampton and I think you know, when I got back into training, he liked what I tried to do, but and he gave me the odd chance in the first team, but I didn't quite take it. You know, I always, you know, didn't didn't quite get the goal mm. or, or the. He went on to build a promotion winning side there as well, didn't he? Yeah, well, I mean, at the time they were obviously well backed, you know, with with good money behind the scenes, and I fancied them to get up mm. at some point. Um, obviously they had two playoff defeats when I was there I, I played in the first one um, and then got got managed to get automatic promotion the third, third year, year. Mm -hmm. and Martin Ling what was he like obviously or you only worked with him briefly yeah I really I really liked Lingy again you know I th he was one of those like I think he could appreciate what I did but I didn't really fit into the way he wanted to play he had two great strikers he had Gary, Gary Alexander and Lee Steele up front and he liked to play with ultra width with, yep. with wide men so you know I didn't really fit into that sort of system but you know I think he liked I played a few reserve games and I, he liked what I did it was just you know I didn't really fit into to what he wanted to have in the first team at that time Gary Alexander he's a lad that always used to seem to score against us he used to score against most people, to be fair. He was, you he you was then went on to move to Bury. Yeah. Um, obviously, you went and studied sports journalism. Mm -hmm. Talk me about that. Um, that was like a PFA. It was the PFA's baby. Um, and I was on the first intake of that. They wanted to, you know, they always offer. I've always been really, really So they try and encourage patient. players yeah. kind of different well, aspects to. that they yeah. could then use later on in their career. Basically, yeah, because uh, every player, no matter how amazing you are fitness-wise, mm. you're going to be finished at mm. mid-30s. So it's nice, I think it's nice of the PFA to do things like that then, isn't I, it? I do. I mean, they get a lot of stick, I know, from some places. But in terms of my experience, they've they've always been very helpful and putting on the education which I think is, is, is vitally important for, for players and you know I took on I took on that course because it was something that really interested me at the time and um, like Scott Minto was on yep. my course with me and obviously he's now a you know, big thing at, at Sky and um, yeah it was, it was really it was it was really good for I me. I guess it was interesting as well from a player's perspective, always been around the media, mm. to then go and study what the media do. Yeah, yeah, and it was all it was all interesting. I did I did think that it might be sort of an avenue for me mm. in the future, mm. and that's obviously why I did it. Um, it didn't quite work out that way in the end. Um, I did I, I did do sort of freelance stuff for a couple of years, and I did it, and um, I was hoping I actually wanted to go and work at the evening news for a bit okay um but it didn't quite fall into place and then you know sort of went it's a shame because they need some decent reporters these days <laughs> <laughs> obviously we've, we've touched on you being a mr statistic and a stato yeah. is what the lads used to call you uh, yeah um obviously how, how how do you progress like how do you have all that memory like obviously we, we could sit here and probably and say about a game, I don't know, in a, ch a cold Tuesday night somewhere, and you'd know everything about it, who played and everything. Wow, well, maybe. Obviously, you used to get some stick from the lads from that. Yeah. Obviously, you, you're quite a clever lad. How, you went on then to be an accountant, haven't you, do I believe? Is that right? Yeah. 
Yeah. That's and right. how, how are you finding Korea now away from football? It's great. I mean, I was really lucky. I, when I changed tack after being a journalist and then changed tack and thought accountancy kind of fits me quite well. Mm. So yeah, you've also got a good memory process. Yeah. <laughs> so I, um, when I switched tack to that, got a qualification. And then literally when I'd signed up with a temp agency, the first place they put me in touch with was Green King. And I've been there nine and a half years since. So, um, you know, it's worked out well for me. It's yeah, recent Edmonds again, it? yeah, yeah, I'm still, still quite still local. local, yeah. Take you back yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good. So, uh, as, as we've said, what, what's your situation just now? How are you? I mean, we know you've not been 100% over the, the, the past having read your book. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, my MS is a bit of a problem at the moment. It's Obviously, you can see, see with my two sticks, I, I, I struggle with mobility at the moment. So, you know, it's kind of like trying to... What I would like when I speak to my consultants is... You know, I can deal with most of it, and I can even deal with the lack of mobility. But if I could just say, well, from now on, that's it. Yeah. That yeah. would be that would be really handy. So mm -hmm. even if I was in a wheelchair, and I could say, right, I'm in a wheelchair, but that's it. Nothing else is going to happen. Yeah. That would be handy. But obviously, it's still not knowing, I guess. Yeah, well. that that's yeah. the thing. So, yeah, you can't really draw a line under it like that. Mm. But um, yeah. So, Thanks for that, but you've you, you got two young daughters as well. Yes, um, Hannah is 10 and Orla is 6. Do they keep you on your toes? They do, <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. You've got yeah. to come to <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was good. I think that's what really you can think of. Yeah, yeah, Tom, cool. you, you, you very much are, as, as, as Ben said, you, you, you were known as the excuse the term, nerd in the dressing room. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's and, and fair I enough. I've heard you say before that the banter in dressing rooms is, is mm. a whole different level. It, it can be actually quite almost... Intimidating. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would call it Charlie. Tell you that it's one of the best fun bits of the game. Yeah, and, and that's great. I, mean, I didn't have a problem with any of it. But, I don't know, it's just, it's not really, it wasn't really for me particularly. Yeah. I'm yeah. not, it was a very, very macho, blokey atmosphere mm, sometimes. I can quite imagine. And um, that wasn't always for me. Mm. But, you know, you, you deal with it, how, you know, you, you take part where you want to take part and you mm. sort of take yourself take away when you, want when you want to. Yeah, okay. I mean, I always got on really well with, you know, my teammates really in general. Obviously, you had a brief go at management as well at Mildon Hotel. <laughs> well, I was only ever the ass player assistant, really. <laughs> and then, obviously, when I couldn't play anymore, I stayed on as assistant. Um, and that, you know... It, did you enjoy it, that? It was good. Yeah, I did enjoy it, yeah. It was only really, when the MS really kicked in, mm. it was kind of to towards the end of one season, I thought, yeah. It's yeah, you've got to take a back. Yeah, I really, yeah. really need to take a break from it. Mm. But, um, yeah, I did like it and obviously I started at Mildenhall yeah as, so it was a nice, kid, nice so. kind of full circle it was and yeah, um, yeah and I, I did enjoy it yeah. I think it's fair to say that you've I can embarrass you now and say that you're undoubtedly one of the most popular players certainly mm. of that, mm. that era in, in teams that were really good there's some teams that were maybe not quite so good it's, no, a, name, yeah. it's a name that always pops but up I find always pops up yeah yeah and, oh, that's uh, good and, and it's brilliant to see you back Oh, well, thank you for having me. You're welcome. Mm. Yeah, all done. Yeah.